Farfugal News. Today we're getting a late start on a whole lot of news. Uh, stuff is coming uh, in from around the world. We're going to talk about current events and everything else. So stick around. This is going to be a packed show. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. What is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. We have a ton of stuff to go over in a short amount of time, so if you are new here or a Fugal family member brought you in or suggested my show, uh, everything here is going to have a source over on our website. Now, when you go over there, you'll see that there is a full bibliography of every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we show you here today. Uh, that way, you know exactly where we are getting this information, and you can go fact check yourself or, of course, uh, you, you, the opposite of fact check, which is uh, uh, highly doubt and use your gut and common sense. When you click on this, what is what in the world is going on tactical at our doorstep? Uh, you will see that all of the information is right there. On top of that, it is the last day to get in before the drawing on the Cars for Heroes raffle. Uh, there is a 1966 GMC C10 uh, that is being raffled up. This is a restored classic truck. And, of course, all of the proceeds will go towards uh, getting other veterans into transportation. So, uh, right now, I, I believe they were still under 200 raffle tickets right before the drawing. That means there was a total of 500 that could be sold. Essentially, uh, really good odds as far as if you get a couple tickets, you've got one chance out of a 200 chance to win a you know, a $30,000, uh, you know, restored vehicle. So pretty awesome. Uh, make sure to go over there. All of the proceeds go towards something great, getting a, a veteran or a hero into transportation. Uh, uh, below that, you'll see all of the links and every single article, tweet, video, picture, document. You'll also see our guest video today. We have guest videos. And uh, of course, uh, one of our Fugal family members actually went to the Texas store uh, where they have this new technology where there's no employees involved. You just walk out with the stuff or scan it. Uh, so we'll we'll play that here in a second. That is, of course, Rian and S, also the uh, runner of the Facebook. So we'll get to that as well. Let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I am doing just fine. Now, uh, also note, there is uh, overflow and web-only content. There's a lot of stuff that we could not fit into the show today. So make sure to go check that out. There is a whole nother show there. And then, of course, if you have uh, a car that you want to donate at the very bottom right, there is the Cars for Heroes link. If you have an old beater that you want to go towards uh, some sort of charity, then make sure to go check that out. It is all tax deductible. And it possibly, if it's a good running car, then it could possibly go straight to a veteran so uh, make sure to go check that out all right and then make sure to also go to M friends of marfugal this is where all of the people that we either work with uh, work with us like our mod uh, moderators are all creators they all are, are authors and artists so make sure to go support them they keep it a peaceful and awesome community down below with 5,000 people in the chat 
it's it's definitely hectic down there. So thank them for their service down there. And then also check out all of our friends. These are all friends we vouch for. All right, let's get right into the news. Of course, we have a ton of stuff going on. We have scientists find new evidence of liquid water beneath Mars' south polar ice cap in a major breakthrough. Now, I know already I have people rolling their eyes because uh, essentially there's a lot of people here that do not believe in uh, the fact that we've been to Mars, uh, the moon, wherever it may be. Uh, But we do continue to cover it because this is something that highly interests me. Uh, They are saying in the next few years we're going to have space hotels, that we are going to go back to the moon, that we are going to go to Mars. And I guess for a lot of people... It, people will either be putting their foot in their mouth or they'll be saying, ha ha, I told you so. Uh, I told you we would never go, uh, or at least we may never go. Uh, the rich and elite have all invested into rockets and into space companies. Why? That's my big question. I'd love to have you guys answer that in the comments down below. Please let me know. Wild Fox and Jacob DeLambo and Ryan and Brett Hitchcock, thank you for subscribing. And then Kenny Crowder, thank you for being the last one out on the last show. I do appreciate that. So Dex, it basically says that the University of Cambridge did this study and they say that they might have found new water, right? Or liquid water. This is, yeah, this is the first or a, a different type of study that didn't actually use radar or sensitive equipment um, up in, you know, orbiting around Mars like they've done in the past. They actually sort of did more of like a topological they were they were looking at the masses of land they were looking at the shapes and they were taking the information and they were trying to prove that the way the uh, uh, patterns of the topology were created that it could prove that there was potentially water under the poles or water under the ground there Um, and that that's significant because if they want to you know uh, potentially inhabit Uh, mars at some point you know you need water so you either have to produce it from you know some other form or if it's there in this case maybe just melt it that would be uh, a pretty handy resource to have it also then leads to the fact that the you know it's quite possible that the planet was actually much different a long time ago and you know water and other things were prevalent uh and obviously sort of leads to that theory that the planet sort of died out or or you know took the, the form that it's in now that it was a much different planet you know, eons ago. And by the way, this is probably some, this is a Getty image or stock image. Um, I, I've seen a lot of images of Mars and uh, I've seen people tweet them as if they were uh, straight up real photos. There's a lot of composites and, and uh, essentially digital, digitally altered uh, photos uh, that are not real and people, you know, pass them off as they do. I've even seen newspapers do that. Uh, I, in fact, wrote a couple newspapers a letter because they had a fake uh, a fake photo for Mars and they were saying that this is an actual photo of Mars and uh, they ended up retracting their uh, website They or they changed the photo to a, a different photo. So I, it bugs me when I see stuff like that, uh, especially when, you know, they're claiming it's something else. So you got to keep them accountable. And then Musk reveals new Cybertruck features that will amaze EV buyers. So first of all, um, Elon Musk, you know, the guy kind of predicted that all of this stuff was going to go down. And now a lot of the country is going to start mandating that people are in electric vehicles. I think it is pretty crazy that he got in this so early and regardless of how many other companies get in on this, Tesla's kind of been at the forefront of this and they do uh, definitely do some individual and and very unique things to their vehicles. Uh, Like Elon Musk doing the stupid silly things that make people just absolutely giddy, like being able to choose your own horn. Uh, You can press the horn and it can make a sound like, you know, Darth Vader or you can make whatever sound you want. He joked, and this was real, he said, you know, you can make a fart noise as your horn. Uh, This was something that was actually, you know, a lot of people ended up possibly buying that car because of these stupid features. Uh, But this is apparently going to be a game changer because of the power and the strength of it. It says that it is the most anticipated vehicle of recent years. It could be a game changer in the electric vehicle market. 
and its Tesla. For its manufacturer, Tesla, the Cybertruck could become the cash cow like the F-150 pickup truck has been for Ford for several decades. The Cybertruck has aroused enormous curiosity among Tesla fans, analysts, and industry rivals. Musk has been talking up the truck for a very long time, but its introduction has been delayed. Uh, well, a bunch of times. It says now the closer Tesla gets to the start of production, the more heat the vehicle has been generating among Tesla followers. Elon Musk, Tesla CEO, has recently let out some clues to the fan uh, fans that interest and to the fuel further speculation surrounding the vehicle. So... Uh, it says in July, the serial entrepreneur revealed the production of this futuristic truck would start in mid-2023 at the Tesla factory in Austin, which, by the way, is, is like the, I, I want to say he said many times that it was going to start prior, but is, is that right, or did he just keep telling people to hold on? Well, he kept pushing back, but this whole notion of the, the tweet he did today, I think, is kind of the craziest thing. Uh, uh, reveal that I've heard about this truck. Um, and it basically is coming out and saying it's a boat and it will, uh, it will float and you can take it through water. Um, I, I sort of asked this question, would you take an expensive Tesla and, uh, take it through a lake, a river into the ocean? If you could, would you? Okay. So that, uh, another question and did he, did he do anything tongue in cheek to say that it's not so, He's basically saying that this is amphibious, right? That's that's what he is stating. His, his quote is, "It's I think it's a little further down, Cybertruck will be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat, the entrepreneur said on Twitter uh, today. And he continued to say, so it can cross rivers, lakes, and even seas if they aren't too choppy. That is just so insane. So if it, if it ends up being any kind of uh, amphibious vehicle, think about the the whole market that's going to go all those guys that put uh snorkels on their trucks and these you know crazy uh getups so they can go through rivers and all this stuff um if this can just do that I, it also makes me wonder like what else is this for like is this a vehicle for the the rich and elite to ride out uh tsunamis or the catastrophic flooding uh that they say that will happen in the 2030s uh it just makes me uh question you know but they they're going to have all sorts of features as far as everybody talks about the towing capacity and everything else but if if it is true that this thing is actually able to be a boat this is going to be pretty insane uh but a lot of people are doubting this he has said many things and uh about the tesla truck and people have been pretty pissed off actually most people that i believe did he give the money back for the do, does he still hold deposits for these things didn't we cover a while back that he gave money back to some people and that it was at some point about to be canceled? Wasn't wasn't that wasn't that a thing like, you know, six months ago or something? They always take deposits, I believe. I don't know what the status was for the delays, but yeah, this this truck has been delayed a couple of times, but it's well anticipated because of, for the for the money um, compared to the other Tesla vehicles or some of the higher end ones, it's a lot more affordable. Uh, even if you think, you know, 50,000 is affordable or 60,000 is affordable. It's a lot less than the hundred thousand dollar price tag on some of the, the higher end Teslas. Yeah. Well, and by the way, Teslas are, there's so many places around that they're not special anymore. I don't know if you guys remember when Tesla's first came out, especially the really sleek one, the model X's, uh, when they came out, they were like super sexy. And when you saw one, it, it turned heads. Uh, nobody knew what it was at the beginning. And everybody was like, whoa, what is that? It looked like a Maserati. You know, it was just, it was a, a sexy car. Now I see everybody. Uh, when we got the uh, pizza the other night, um, the guy had to go back to the pizza place to get uh, all the sauces. We basically paid like an extra $10 for all the sauces for this, this big uh, group of people. And the guy had to go back. And so we all chipped in to give him an extra tip. And we said, hey, hopefully this helps with the gas. And he goes, oh, don't worry about it. I drive a Tesla. And it's like a, a, a delivery guy that drives a Tesla. That's like crazy. But now they have those cheaper Teslas and they're everywhere. In fact, I, Dex, how many times do you even see one of the, uh, the, the more fancy Teslas? Mostly it's the newer Teslas, the, the cheaper ones, right? I think that there's a lot more of those on the road now, and it, you see them everywhere. It's like every parking lot that you go, you see a Tesla. 
Yeah, I would agree. The the uh, the more affordable one seems to be more prevalent. Obviously, um, at least where where I live, it's not like everybody around here is bustling around in Teslas. Well, in in Seattle, the tech capital, everybody drives those things. They're popping up everywhere. Uh, do you guys have a Tesla? Are you excited about the Tesla truck? Let us know. Wild Fox, uh, Jacob, thank you. And uh, FG, Simply Pony, Mirror 504, and Jazz Wolf. Thank you, everybody. Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey's private texts show Twitter founder tried to involve Tesla CEO in the site a year before the deal. Uh, essentially, Jack Dorsey was trying to push for him to be a part of the uh, board way before anybody knew about. It said that Jack Dorsey pushed for Elon Musk's addition to Twitter's board a year before the Tesla CEO uh, $44 billion offer, a series of private text messages claim. It says the exchange comes to light amid the ongoing legal battle between Twitter and Musk, who agreed to purchase the social media platform back in April before he pulled out of the deal in July. Court records obtained by Insider show Dorsey first texted the Tesla founder on March 26, and it says that Dorsey's initial text to Musk about Twitter reportedly said, a new platform is needed. It can't be a company. That's why I left. So everything is saying that Jack Dorsey is like this guy who doesn't like the monster he created. There's a little part of me that thinks that maybe Jack Dorsey is not as bad as... So when he did the congressional thing and everybody had to ask these questions, by the way, he got put on blast. When they did those congressional questionings, uh, they just put him through the ringer and every question he had to say, I have to refer you to this or I have to refer to you to that. And he looked like an idiot. Uh, Dex, I don't know if you remember when he was put on the, the, the stand along with uh, Sundar Pichai and uh, I forget who the third. Oh, and then Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Remember how he, when he was there, he was like looked like a hippie. He was like wearing like a tie dye shirt and he had piercings and and everybody was kind of surprised by the look that he had. And he looks like this chill dude that's probably, you know, hitting a, a bong or something in the background. And he had to answer all of these questions and tell people, do you think that maybe he possibly heard everybody talking about how, you know, this, this thing has become a monster and maybe he, since he created or helped create it or helped found it, that maybe he, he realizes what monster he created and, and wanted to get out of it? Well, yeah, he's always sort of said that the, the revenue stream or the fact that they were a business and then once you become a business and more so once you become a public business, you're beholden to your shareholders, which you're beholden to create revenue and create money. And all of that ties back to advertisers because that's the only people that are willing to pay right now. So they had to basically build a social platform based on ad dollars. So everything they've done, everything they've created has been at the will of the advertisers or the advertising dollars. So I think that is at the heart of what he has for a long time sort of been suggesting and saying, but it's come out really clearly in some of these private texts that came out from the court case. So um, I don't know how much it changes anyone's particular view of Jack other than maybe his view of the technology and how he wanted it to uh, evolve in a way that it, it didn't. And, you know, he left and came back and I think he came back and tried to get things uh, the way he wanted it and it still didn't work. And, you know, his performance in Congress was sort of evident of that, evident of that as well as the fact that he was sort of, you know, replaced quickly thereafter uh, and then he resigned from the board. So. Yeah, so he set him up to to possibly lose forty four billion dollars. I I don't know how. The thing is, is Twitter decides most stuff in culture now, and as much as you want to say no, it doesn't. It is, and a lot of people do not know. Only a three out of t every ten Americans are actually on Twitter. That's the stats. Places like Saudi Arabia, they're at eight or nine out of ten are on Twitter. So it's a very powerful tool in Saudi Arabia. In fact. Uh, I only use that one as a uh, example because that is one of the countries that it is heavily, heavily uh, a very powerful app there. And there's other countries as well that are the same. But here in America, it was it was uh, just as of like a year and a half ago, it was every, you know, three out of every 10 Americans. So that means seven out of every 10 Americans uh, are basically letting it up to these three out of every 10 Americans, the minority uh, and the very small chunk that are even on Twitter 
then are deciding what is going on with our culture. What is deciding, you know, what it, this whole woke, you know, movement is all coming from Twitter. And there have been studies and there's been universities that have looked at this and it's a direct reflection of what people are saying on Twitter. It was almost like this became a secondary kind of world. And then the real world started reflecting what was going on on Twitter. Twitter is extremely powerful right now. And you you guys heard it. You heard it from Twitter itself. They, there was all these stuff, all the stuff that leaked that basically told us that they didn't even care about making money at one point if they were able to keep their bias up. They wanted to uh, push a certain narrative and they, they wanted to push a certain side and they were okay with losing money to keep pushing that. My guess is because they were getting money from other places, those places that they wanted to push. That's my opinion. What's yours? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, thank you over on D Live. Thank you, Michelle K, Priscilla R. Priscilla R, thank you. I appreciate you being here almost every night, uh, if if not every night. Chance Paladin, we've got Sky House. Kimbria, thank you. Uh, I love Jesus forever. We've got Sky uh, Sky Will and Zuby360 and, of course, Vicky K. Thank you guys for your support over on D Live. And thank you guys for gifting out badges. Uh, thank you, everybody over there gifting out Marfia badges. Thank you. Appreciate the fart horn, says Michelle K. Yeah, and then howdy, Fugle fam, Zuby. Hey, Zuby, it's nice to see you here again, and it's nice to see everybody is still hanging out on DLive and keeping it awesome. Thank you, your mods over there, Chance and Jammer and Wonder Woman, if she's in there. Hope you guys are all doing well. And then obscure Cold War concern resurfaces leads to expansion of Newsom's power. Uh, Dex, do you want to go over this one? This is, this is uh, yeah. So this is shocking. this is kind of interesting to think about. So let's let's put this in perspective. This is the the gentleman who's claiming to to run uh, for one side of the party if the current administration doesn't. This is the person that's in charge of the largest state uh, by GDP. And probably by population, I haven't looked at the population numbers, but by GDP by far of our entire union in the United States here. He's also one who survived a, um, a, a what was it? They tried to oust him, right? And he survived that. So he's probably in the know. He's also related to the Speaker of the House. Um, he's got a lot of connections. So he has now declared a rule by which they can uh he can take emergency powers if there's an emp strike so that's kind of telling when somebody of that significance of power is saying hey this is so important that we're going to put this into law right away that makes me wonder or makes me think about what may be coming and why it's so important i know we have often talked about it and everybody here in our show knows about the potential threat of an emp but now we're seeing it not only on one side but on the other side and we're seeing it in a big way like they're coming in and saying we're going to make sure that we can take power when this thing happens because we think it's going to happen kind of scary so so i want to point out that before cv happened we showed you all the exercises and all the drills going on for that um i i knew cv was going to be a big thing i covered the first patient that was there um i of course talk to you guys about this months before I showed you just a couple months before how they were drilling with gas masks down at the uh, Pike Place Market. I showed you, I, I went to the first U.S. patient ever of CV. I went to the hospital. I did drone footage. Uh, I ended up interviewing nurses there and they all pretended like they didn't know what was going on. It was really f funky, but I knew and w I told you guys to, to prepare to get stuff, extra stuff. For, for that though, What's crazy is after it did happen, obviously uh, the the 201 stuff and everything else we covered and everything that led up to that, we told you, I put it, the, there's still proof. You can go back through the thumbnails. You can see uh, all of my thumbnails have meaning and, and all of them have, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, clue to what the show is about. There's several that said, this is coming. I showed you the graphs, how they were working out, how what just happened before it happened they were looking at how it was going to affect our economy and i told you look at this this is these are really weird patterns they're practicing for they're they're setting up for something huge then it happened the good thing about that though is we were still able to get online and actually talk about it 
This is something that we do believe is a serious thing that's going on right now. And we're showing you all the signs of, of something that is potentially going to happen. But we will not be here if this does happen. So if an EMP does happen, we're not going to be able to come on and talk to you. There will be no Marfugel News. There'll be no Google. There'll be no DuckDuckGo. There'll be no nothing because we will not have power. This is one emergency that once it happens, everybody is going to be in their own bubble and everybody is going to be isolated from the rest of the world. How connected and how dependent we are on all of this stuff is really going to become really apparent if this happens. Now, I hope this doesn't. On top of this, we already have, see me, this is why we've been telling you for now three plus years. And we told, I told you guys this before we ever had uh, EMP Shield as an affiliate. I've been telling you guys this a solid year before this. And that's because the patterns are there. I'm not a psychic. I'm a person who looks at the patterns. And I'm also a person that talks to a ton of people. All of our military group people, everybody. And then we follow all of these patterns. If you look at history, one thing that I you know, am pretty good at is looking at the patterns. There's a lot of my peers and, and uh, the, the people that are doing channels beside me that are good at looking at these patterns. You guys are good at looking at these patterns. Everybody sees this coming. But the people at your office or at you know your coworkers, your family that think you're crazy for preparing for something like this, they think you're nuts. When this is actually one of the easiest ways to take the United States down. And it honestly could be done by a ton of countries at this point. Even NK has a satellite that goes over the U.S. twice uh, twice a day. Is it twice a day, Dex? I want to say it's it's twice a day or, or oh, they, it every goes, other It goes day. over at least once, uh, I think, was what the last report. But they have two satellites that do it. So sometimes, um, you know, we don't know how often it is. So it's kind of interesting. But now Gavin Newsom, the guy who's in charge of the richest state, richer than New York, Disney, all of these huge companies brings in billions and billions of dollar is adding electromagnetic pulse attacks to the grounds under which he could declare a state of emergency. Why? Why would he put that in there? Uh, I, I guess maybe an advisor, an EMP, which can be caused by an attack with a nuclear weapon, particularly at high altitudes, could damage significant portions of the nation's infrastructure, including the electric grid, communications equipment, water, and wastewater systems. So, by the way, that last part, and even cars, yeah. So, water and wastewater systems. This is why 90% of people would die. It's not because of the grid. It's not because, well, it's mostly the grid is part of it, but... Communications equipment, that's horrible. Nobody will be able to figure out what is going on. Everybody will be running around like a chicken with their head off. But water, 90% of us would perish because we would not have access to clean, drinkable, potable water. This is why you need to have extra water, tons of water if you can. You don't need to walk into a house stacked to the ceiling of water, but you do need, and, and if you could... I would say get a you know some some sort of thing that you can have not only at your house that is able to filter water, uh, but also have some water stored and have water stored somewhere else. Uh, plan B, a Plan C. I know people that actually bury jugs of water in special containers in certain places along their trip so they can dig it up and be able to go and get that water. That sounds extreme, but we know a lot of people that are actually practicing for these kind of events. And when you talk about this, people think that it, you that it's it's scary and nobody wants to think about it. But look at all the signs that are popping up. An EMP can also be uh, produced artificially from an electromagnetic bomb or can be a natural phenomenon such as when the sun sends out a particularly large amount of plasma. Now, the sun version, that will happen a uh, uh, if we do have a coronal mass ejection well, when we do, and it hit, hits us directly, and it's an X-class flare, and it's it's just everything adds up, and that happens every so often. It happens on average every 140 years. It's been about 150. That's going to happen as well, and it, it really, it, it's a matter of if the United States and other places around the world are going to be prepared for it or not. We've been telling you about this, guys, for, for a, a very long time. I hope people end up uh, taking these things seriously with everything else that's going on. We have so much tonight. We'll have to fly through it. 
Uh, we're going to talk about the solar activity here in just a second. But I want to remind you, there is solutions for all this. So don't freak out if you can. Try to go and get an EMP shield if you can. Like we have said, anything that we do as far as an affiliate, we think will either save a life or will help you sustain your life or will help you in, in overall as far as the generators and as far as the uh, pretty much any product that you can get from us is something that will help you survive in any kind of disaster. It doesn't have to be an SHTF. So if you haven't checked these guys out, you can protect yourself. Now, I would highly recommend people save up if they're not able to afford this kind of stuff, but also go to their website. They actually tell you how to make Faraday cages. They actually give you the information you need to know so you don't have to buy their product. That's how good of a company they are. Uh, they are also the same company that's outfitting <clears throat> agencies like DHS, DOD, and of course the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Uh, not only are you helping us support us with the commission, but you're getting a huge discount of $50 off per device. These can be wired into your car, generator, boats, motorcycles, uh, even your ham radio in your home uh, very easily. So go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. All right, let's get uh, Wages on the phone. Wages World is on the phone, and he's going to give us an update on the, the coronal uh, mass ejection and all the crazy other stuff that's going on, the, the solar flares. Uh, wages, do we have you? Yeah, what's up, Adam? How you guys doing? Hey, good. So let's go over. Uh, I have some photos here that you have given us, and you have an update on yep. what is kind of going down here. Yeah, um, yeah. if you just want to pull up the first one there, um, just let me know when you're there, and I'll – yeah, there you go. Um, I'm trying to watch them on the TV with the volume down. That way I kind of know where we're at. But All right, we're anyway, on the KP um, index. What you're going to look at there on – go ahead. Are you there? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're good. I'll just let you go. Okay. Okay. No, uh, uh, yeah. Um, what you're looking at there, guys, that is a, uh, a capture from the NOAA forecast model. Um, and why this is kind of significant, anybody that's ever watched my channel for any length of time, or probably even yours, uh, Adam, um, that is a extremely long period for a geomagnetic storm to be forecasted. That's over two days long. Um, and they're not just forecasting like a low level thing there either. That's, you're seeing sixes pop in there. That's a G2 storm. And a lot of times when you start seeing those kinds of things and it's an ongoing event like that, um, they end up being stronger than that because it just hangs around for so long. Um, and I, you know, we can't even see what's on October 3rd yet. So it may even go further. <laughs> um, so what's happened here is we, if you want to go ahead and uh, go to the the next uh, capture there, it's actually a little eight, like a nine second video. I'll have you play. Um, and as you're doing that, I guess I'll go ahead and talk. Um, you're going to see like, uh, it's, it's basically you're going to see two little CMEs pop off. Uh, and I'm calling them little, and they're really kind of not little. The second one is, okay, um, but that first one's actually substantial. Um, what you're looking at there, it's a, it's a top-down view of our inner solar system. Obviously, the yellow ball in the middle is the sun. The greenish yellow ball off to the right is the Earth. Um, that's top-down on the left, and that's a side cut on the right. And um, so it's hitting us on both both perspectives. So that's definitely going to happen according to this model. And this is NOAA's model. So this is this is the reason they're forecasting this geomagnetic storm. Now, um, if you go to the next capture, um, I'll explain to you why this is happening. Um, what you're going to see is you're going to see a, a a pretty sizable coronal hole, a couple of them actually. Um, and we connect it to this coronal hole, and when the corona opens up on the sun, it exposes the surface. And when the surface of the sun's exposed, high-charged particles just flow out. And um, they come to Earth via a magnetic connection line called an uh, interplanetary magnetic connection line. Um, but those charged particles are going to be hitting us. Now, the coronal hole itself is enough to put us into like a low-level storm anyway. But you tag on a CME that's kind of happening at the same time, 
it's the double tap thing that we've talked about a lot. Um, and it's actually, it does look like this is going to happen. Now, the solar, this coronal hole kind of primed our magnetic field to kind of be acceptable to this CME that's going to be kind of like side swiping us. And it's not even a direct hit, but it's not like a, a glancing blow either. It's kind of like a, a, a it, it's a side swipe. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, but that coronal hole, and then if you want to go to the next capture there, Adam, um, it's a little nine second video also, and I'll show you the CME itself. Um, and it happened right on in the middle of those two coronal holes. Uh, that, that actually would probably be one big coronal hole if um, that sunspot was not there. Okay, um, that would be one big gigantic hole, but you'll see it erupt right. You know, I'm sure you're seeing it. If you want to just keep playing it, loop it if you can. I'm not sure if you can do that or not, but you'll see it. The the you'll see the corona kind of get disrupted, um, and that's that was a CME that popped off. So, and you see that if you actually watch the beginning of that, you'll see a little small the smaller one will kind of pop off too. I think the smaller one actually popped off first, and then the bigger one came behind it. And it was faster than the first one. So it I, kinda I just want to point it. out the model didn't know how to. I, I just want to point out that this is small. This is small on the sun, uh, but these are the size or larger or m many times larger than the Earth. So when when you see this little thing happen on the sun, uh, that little thing is as large as the Earth itself, and could be very you know ten times as big as the Earth. So I just want to point that out. It it, well, it, it looks so tiny on screen. But that you know, if that heads towards us, that's our entire planet. Right, exactly. And if you, if you compare the size of the Earth to the actual coronal hole, um, you could, if I'm guessing, you're probably going to fit a hundred Earths in that hole. That's how <laughs> that's how big of the stuff that we're looking at. So when you see like, I I I used to put like Earth scale on here, but they took it off of the tool I was using, and I'm I'm trying to you know, find another tool so I could put that back on there and be correct with it. Um, but there are tools out there that actually put earth scale there so you can see it, but the coronal hole itself, just that without, you know, that sunspot you're just looking at right there. Um, if you just to go just the width of it, you're probably looking at 15, 20, maybe 30 earths width wise. Um, you know, so it's, it's huge. It's like when you look at it and those, those, it's a great point. We're like, um, honestly, we're, we're, um, you we're know, like a I, I oftentimes dust. forget to say that, but yeah, good. We're, we're like dust. We're we're like uh, us as humans. Like I'm a grain of dust compared to the sun, essentially. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And I, and I think that that's it's a it's a great analogy because you know I, I say this all the time: the sun can do what it wants, when it wants, and how it wants to do it. Um, you know that is it is the main driving factor for so many things on our planet. Uh, almost all things, to be honest with you, even down to earthquakes, down to all of it, it, it influences everything. Um, you know, without that, we wouldn't be here, obviously. Um, you know, and, and when big things change, you know, it's going to change us too. And, you know, you go back to the old magnetic pole flip thing. You can go back to anything you want to go back to. It always goes back to a base, of something that's coming from the sun or being influenced by the sun. Everything we talk about, you know, you were talking about Mars before I came on here and Mars doesn't have an atmosphere now because of the sun. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they theorized that Mars was very much like us until, you know, whatever happened, either a big CME or just a constant, you know, barardment of bad stuff hitting it from the sun. So, you know, it's, it's very substantial to look at these things and it's kind of, uh, it's humbling when you look at it and you put it in what you said earlier, we're just a, a speck of dust. Um, and it makes us still very vulnerable, but this is why we do what we do. You know what I'm saying, Adam, you know, we got to make people aware and, uh, and that helps us all not be afraid. Um, you know, so we make better decisions when well, the big things do happen. I have a question. And I'm glad you said something about the. Uh, how, how many people do you think followed this stuff before the internet? How many people other than, you know, professors in college or 
uh, f- you know, they, they didn't really cover this kind of activity unless there was something extremely special uh, on, you know, they, even on news stations back in the day. It's only been since the Internet. Obviously, they, you know, studied this stuff they were learning about. But even in just the last five years, they say that the, the data and the information that we know about the sun has, I, I want to say it's a hundred times what we knew five years ago. So, I mean, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, it is. And, you know, to answer your question, there's probably about three people that follow this. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, um, it's and you're right. You know, I remember being a kid and it being very special to watch like a weather report on regular TV and they mentioned something that came from the sun. Um, you know, and as I say that there's actually, you know, um, there's a channel called Tamantha Scove. She, uh, she was on the weather channel talking about, uh, space weather. She's been on there a couple of times. So she's got a, she, she's got a, uh, a YouTube channel. If you guys want to check her out, it's like free college it really is. She's a professor and everything else, but, um, you can learn a lot over there. I've learned a lot from her. But I didn't. I didn't really follow this like this. I mean, I knew knew some of this stuff because it, it's interested me since I was a kid. But I, you know, obviously I couldn't have followed it. I didn't even know these tools existed <laughs> to where we could look at them. You know, if you think about that, you know, where where were you going to collect this data at if, without computers? You weren't going to do it. It's you know they have it. They would have had the data, but how could we have accessed it? There's no way. Um, so it, it's, it's helped in, in that way. And, and, you know, it's just, it is, it's very humbling when we see this stuff. And, and as I was waiting to unmute, believe it or not, we just got hit with an inflare. <laughs> so there's radio blackouts going on across the world right now. Um, on the other side, on the day side, it actually just happened. So, <laughs> but that's, it's a low level. It's not a big deal, but that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It just happens. And now we're able to see it and we get, it's not really real time, but it's close. So if you if you want to go to that last capture, Adam, and I'll, I'll end with that one because it's uh, it is kind of a uh, substantial. You've actually talked about this before. Um, there's been multiple articles written in a probably I don't know the past three months. I would say they're using seismic activity on the sun to project what the back of the sun looks like as far as where the sunspots are. Um, and they start off usually with the articles, hey the there's a sunspot on the back of the sun that's changing the vibration of the whole sun. Now that's, that's, um, it's very substantial, but those sunspots that are in the front are doing the same thing. They just don't say it. So it's there's seismic activity on the sun and they're able to use that to map out what the back of the sun looks like. Cause we don't have eyes back there. Not like we used to, we used to have stereo A and B all the way on the side where we got a really good look at the back. We no longer get that. Um, you know, the Parker SP satellite, well, actually, we'll go back there sometimes. I um, mean, there is a couple back there, but they're not like what we can look at and see. So when you're looking at that capture right there, those are the sunspots on the front of the sun. Now, this is back on the 26th. Um, and, and the gray part is what we see from our perspective. The red and all the other stuff is the backside. So they're, this is a really cool technology that they're using now. The new method that they're using, and they're and they're really they're getting really accurate with it, and it's a really good tool to have because we kind of see what's coming. We don't just look for CMEs that kind of blow off the back of the sun anymore. We look for both. We can look at that, and we can look at this. So it's it does help, and um, but it's significant, you know, seismic activity. It's not an earthquake. <laughs> there is no earth on the sun. It's plasma. So, but there is seismic activity. And a lot of it happens in the magnetic fields of the sun. So, you know, the last show I did with you, I think I talked about that a little bit, you know, with the three, you know, erupting at the same time. That's kind of what I'm talking about. That's magnetic uh, seismic activity that's causing that to happen all at the same time. It's all connected. So (laughs) just like we get earthquakes, like we've been having big uptick on that, you know, you get an earthquake down here and what? Six, eight hours later, you see it on the other side. And sometimes 12, whatever the time frame is. But you always see a second one on the other side of the plate almost every time. And the same thing happens with the sun. I don't know how many times I showed people we get a big eruption and then a, a, almost 180 degrees the opposite direction, you'll get, a, you'll get another eruption 
usually just a little bit smaller than the one that erupted off the front or the side or wherever it came from. So these are all really good tools that we're using. And, and you know, like I wouldn't be able to tell, tell you we had the flare unless we had this. I had my computer running and I just happened to glance over and look at it and it said we were R1 radio blackout conditions. I'm like, what? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. And it, it, it's a good thing. And that's why we talk about it. So, but this now, was, um, I have a question. This is going to be a significant event. Yeah. And I have a question for you. So, so basically, well, also, so what you're saying is if we see if they, when they used to have monitoring on the backside, if something massive went off the backside, then we could almost expect kind of like if there was a 9.0 in, in Japan, that there might be a seven or 8.0 on the opposite side of the planet that we might see some sort of solar activity on our side of the sun if something went off the back. Uh, also, as far as like the, the worst case scenario, the stuff that nobody wants to think about, ha- have you learned about, is there any really good predictions or models that would show uh, h- how many places on Earth would be affected? I know that before they thought that you know certain parts of the Earth would be safe from this, but then over the last 20 years, they've found out things that have changed their mind and said that it could affect the entire planet. Is there anywhere that's safe from this that would still possibly have electricity after, you know, worst case scenario, X class, just all the way up there uh, uh, event? Well, you know, that's it, it, it's actually that's a hard question. And there are a lot of stuff that is being studied right now. And there has been um, some models and things made, but we do know now what's different is that we do know that it affects everything globally. Um, You know, something called the global electric circuit, you know, energy in means energy out. Um, That's just, that's basic physics. So we know that when we get stuff from the sun, space weather, cosmic rays, whatever we're talking about here, it goes to the core of the planet. It's got to come back out. So what I'm saying is it, it, it actually depends on the infrastructure of where you live. If you want to start talking about, you know, if you're going to lose your power and stuff, is there any safe place on this planet? I don't think so. That's just my opinion. Um, and I think there's a lot of data that supports that. Um, you know, and we're talking, you know, the big event is what I'm saying here. Um, like Carrington level or bigger, probably most likely bigger. <laughs> now I will say this, the day side of the planet would probably take a harder, a harder hit. Whatever side's facing the sun when this hit is definitely going to take a more immediate type of a hit, um, but it will get into the whole system. It, they've even there's new technology now that they're seeing it go through the water. Um, you know this energy going through the water, <laughs> so that it's telling you that that's going to affect. You're not going to be able to get on a boat and get away from it. You're not going to be able to get away from it. Period. Um, you know, it, and that's what you know. People dig holes like our elites are doing, and they go. <laughs> I just, I don't know. You know, I know we've all seen the doomsday maps. But those are those are more for like well, I think you know like full flip and those kinds of situations. But as far as grid down, there, I don't think there's a place on the planet that you would be safe in a, in a substantial event like that. I really don't. Well, wages. Um, there's too much technology. I, we're yep. uh, go well, ahead. Dave. Wages. I had a question for you, real quick, Adam. I'm sorry. No, um, no, no. I was. We've say, talked. To, I was okay. going to say you had a question. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I just want to jump in. It's rare that I get to wages. Um, real quick, I know there's been some people that have claimed there's correlations to CMEs and earth activity, like earthquakes. Has there been any discussion or research done showing any correlation to that and uh, the effects on, say, hurricanes, which just came through? Oh, yes. 100% there is. Um, and a lot of it's being done by I wouldn't say even, you know, collegiate stuff or anything like that. It's a lot of independence um, doing a lot of that research, but there is some good research out there and it does, it does must, you know, even, well, even like uh, NOAA, I've shown you guys the geoelectric field map. That's not geomagnetism. They're, they're looking at geoelectric uh, signatures to try to piece together um, how to forecast and help predict earthquakes because we know that it's we're, it's affected by the sun and stuff that we get from space. They, they're just trying to figure out exactly how much and, and what. Um, if you go look at that one over on NOAA, it, the USGS stamp is actually on that map. 
um, along with the NOAA. So they're working together there to try to, you know, find something that works. But there's a lot of, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of, um, it's almost too, I don't know, it's too coincidental to look at some of these earthquakes. And I've done it myself. I'm not an earthquake guy, right? But I can I, I can see patterns. I can see when things happen and I do pay attention and anybody can do that. So when I'm looking at something and I see an earthquake and I can go back to like we had a flare or a CME that hit like an hour or two before that, like right over top of the earthquake. I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> it's just hard not to think that that didn't have something to do with it. Um, and, and I think that even the earthquakes, the earthquakes and the hurricanes are tied together. And, and then I would say that the sun, you know, we had the sun um, blast off a couple of flares a couple of years ago to two hurricanes in the Gulf right over top of them. And both of them intensified rapidly after that. So, you know, at the very least, it's adding electrons to our system. That's a very, that's the very least it's going to happen. So it's adding instability. So it's going to increase the stuff for hurricanes, especially when it hits right on, you know, if that hurricane's facing the sun when the blast hits us. That's exactly what happened a couple of years, years ago in the Gulf. Happened twice, like two weeks apart from one another. So there were two separate storms, and we got lucky enough that we had flares on both of them right over top. And they both reacted the same way. So that's, that's pretty good data for me to be like, man, that definitely is correlated some way. That's a great question, though, Dex. It really is. Yeah. Th um, thanks, Wages. I just wanted to give yeah. credit to Mark Metheny and, and some others that were in chat had asked that question. So just the, the Fugel family oh, yeah. wanted to know. So thank yeah. you. Sweet, sweet. Thank you, guys. Yeah, All right. Well, it's wages, question, you guys. Really wages. Is, uh, so. We have we have a ton uh, right behind you, so we're a little bit out of time. But I wanted to thank you for coming on and giving I'm us sorry. this update. Oh no, you, you don't have to say sorry about anything. Uh, I appreciate you coming on, and it's an honor to have you on. And I appreciate you uh, updating us with all of this, you know, really great info. Well, I appreciate you guys. I really do, and you know. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm honored that you put me on the friends page along with our second channel, the lifeboat. It's just, it's a, such a great thing. You know, it's a good family thing here and it, it's spread to other channels. So just know that you guys have, uh, facilitated that in a big way. So thank you. Well, no problem. And we, uh, hope that it gets, uh, I hope the family gets bigger. Well, thank you wages. And I appreciate you. <laughs> and, uh, we'll, we'll make sure to, uh, push everybody over. Uh, and again, if you, uh, have not seen Wages World, make sure to go over and, uh, to the Friends page, and you can actually find uh, both of his channels. Uh, the Lifeboat is actually centered around uh, addiction recovery. If you want to go check that out, he has guests over on that channel. Uh, they do some really great content over there as well. If you want to follow the solar uh, activity, then make sure to just go check out Wages World. Uh, that is, uh, again, right there at the very bottom. Uh, it's all alphabetical, by the way. So, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you have uh, yeah, a you put W. Yeah, you man. What's up? What's well, up actually, that? hey, I kidding. bet <laughs> people will see the first channel and the last channel uh, a lot more. But either way, that's the beta. <laughs> we'll we'll have a much better. Uh, we'll, we'll we're working on it, and we're going to change it over time. Well, thank you so much, wages. And, I'm just kidding and, you anyway. I know, all right, you, guys. All right, love you guys. You, you guys have, have a good, a good night. One. All right, bye bye. That was Wages World. There's other great channels on there, like the official Ann Lynn show. Of course, you've got Mr. MB33, Justin True, Jacob Israel, Donut Factory. Really, really, really smart guy. If you haven't checked out that channel, make sure to go over and check out his channel. Uh, he's closing in on 100,000 subscribers. Uh, it would be really cool if he got there uh, this week. The Bitter Critter, Bible Talk 777. RE55, all sorts of great people. All right, let's. Um, we've got so much more. So first of all, this is just kind of going over what he was talking about. This is uh, this is essentially talking about the double trouble, solar wind stream, and coronal mass ejection to trigger a G2 class geomagnetic storm on Earth on October 1st. So in the next two days, this is a date that we can actually go by. Unlike a lot of dates that people are throwing around. This is a date we know that at least something is going to happen. 
Uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be end of the world or anything. It's not going to knock out everybody's grid, but it it will have. Uh, I, I predict that a lot of you may have cell phone issues, or you won't be able to access the internet for some reason, or uh, problems with different banks and accessing apps and things like that. Th this kind of stuff all all happens around these events. Uh, when we see the major event, then everything is down and it's not coming back up, or at least not for a long time. We're talking about six months to 18 months to even two years, depending on how well we're put together after an event like that happens. And everybody wants to put it to the back of their mind. Nobody wants to think it will happen to us. It's the same kind of theory as you never think, oh, you know, a, a, a serial killer is... is uh, lived right down the street and they always say oh I can't believe it happened in my neighborhood or I can't can't believe it happened here it's such a peaceful place it always happens in a peaceful place it always happens here in the nice neighborhood right it it, it always does uh, same thing with this only on a grand scale where the entire world thinks it's just never gonna happen but yet it did happen and it will and all and this is just one of like 50 different events that could happen that could affect all of us all at the same time so just make sure to just go about your P's and Q's and and do some simple pre uh, preparation. Floods devastation after Hurricane Ian hammers Florida. Obviously, most of you have seen this is horrendous. Uh, there are so many images, so many videos coming out of uh, Florida. It is really, really sad. We know Fugle family members that are affected by this and... I almost guarantee there's going to be a lot. Of, I can guarantee you there's people that are not going to be covered by insurance. There's going to be people, people that have perished. There's going to be people that have lost everything in this storm, which is really bad. Uh, it, it, again, there's a lot of content out there, by the way. Go check out some of the clips that are out there about uh, about everything that, that is going on with this. Uh, they are There's so many things on Twitter being floated around as far as uh, how mainstream is trying to use this for other purposes. Uh, make sure to go uh, go down that rabbit hole on Twitter. There's a lot of really great info and they're tearing apart kind of the narrative. And then Monster Hurricane Ian devastates Florida, leaving 2 million without power, many trapped in homes. Uh, this is really freaky. So my wife was told about this woman who was in the floating boat we actually added it to the show yesterday this woman was in a floaty and like one of these she said it called it a floaty but it's not like a like a ring it was more like an inflatable boat and she was sitting in this and she was updating on tiktok and she kept updating it, you could see the water in her home was about halfway to her ceiling and all of her stuff including her fridge and everything else was floating beside her and it was daytime when she did the first video I don't know if any of you have followed this, but she was like a, a very small, you know, a very small creator. And apparently she's gotten, you know, thousands, if not tens of thousands of people following her because she kept updating. And as it got darker, she had no power. She had no nothing. The last message that went out, she said, I really need help. This is really bad. Like it went from like positivity and like, this is funny, TikToking to this is really bad and no one is coming. And now they are using TikTok and other apps to actually go out and search for people. So we do know at least one of our extended family members and their friends, they have gone out and they based the information of where they went out for their search and rescue based off TikTok. Here's what's so messed up. TikTok is functional right now in a ton of these areas, but 911 is not. Think about that. This is this is our society and this is our 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 uh, advanced civilization where the system that you call in an emergency where you get help it's not working but TikTok is. Where are our priorities? How is TikTok working? Why don't they have a internet app or something if they're going to switch over to all this crap? Why are people able to TikTok a video of them floating in their home but they're not able to call call 911? Doesn't that seem kind of off? Uh, by the way, Celtic Warrior, before you you uh, you disappear or get out of here, thank you so much for your massive support. It says, just keep stacking and remember to help those who are willing to think for themselves. Celtic Warrior, that's about the only people we can help. So thank you for being one of them, and thank you. I appreciate your support. Thank you for supporting our independent channel. 
Stephen McMahon says NK can't sneeze without G's permission. If Rocket Man attacks us, it's by proxy. I I agree with you. I think that I and I think Vlad is like number number two. NK is number three. G is number one. He's he's the boss over those two. I don't know though. Vlad being as richy as he is, he's probably you know hand in hand with G or something. Uh, believe in Jesus just subscribed. What is going on? Welcome. A warm welcome to you. Wild Fox, thank you for subscribing. Uh, of course, uh, Ronaldo, thank you for subscribing. Uh, Sandy uh, Sandy Hind, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, Rose Rags Cattery, thank you for subscribing. Mr. 67 Nova, uh, eight minutes ago, thank you. I appreciate uh, you subscribing, and, and uh, welcome to the Mafia, everybody. All right, and then... Uh, uh, Dex, do you have family members that are currently still in any kind of peril? I know that we have Fugle family members that have moved or that are in shelters right now. Everyone I know so far has uh, weathered through it and gotten through. Maybe not unscathed, but uh, certainly you know still alive and dodging you know some of the bad stuff. So it's it's not been easy. And it's if you look at some of these pictures and what these people have gone through, it's pretty. Uh, pretty scary i mean even like there's an island down there called sanibel uh that has a major causeway through it that connects the islands uh together that thing's completely wiped out not just like the sandbar came over no like it literally took the asphalt off of the roads there's nothing left there um there's a lot of places and that's just one big example there's plenty of other examples like we've seen the flooding we showed yesterday you can see like you know a lot of this place a lot of the places that were close to the water where the water came in just look like complete disaster zones so um it, it's it's not going to be an easy or, or quick fix uh those that have lived through these major major hurricanes whether it was you know andrew or katrina or other places no it does take time and it no, nothing happens quickly especially when you need you know that much lumber that much construction that much insurance you know re, you know red tape to jump through to get stuff paid for it's not easy so a lot of prayers going out to these folks and it's going to be a long road and i think you know the news will move on shortly thereafter uh but these people will be dealing with this for years to come they'll have tarps on their roofs for well over a year um unfortunately the hurricane is still a hurricane or it reformed uh, as it went in the atlantic and i think it's heading into it's currently i think it's tracking towards charlotte um, or Charleston, I should say, Charleston, uh, South Carolina. So I think they're going to be uh, getting hit next. Uh, it is a Cat 1, so it is a lot less than what hit Florida. When it went to Florida, it was a 4. So, But prayers and, and uh, well wishes for everybody that's in its path or has to have gone through this uh, devastation. And now it's up to 2.6 million of Florida's 11 million homes and businesses were without power. Um, now, one thing to point out, that map up there was in uh, the red, the dark, dark red was nine plus feet of water. So the, there was a huge chunk of this whole area. This is uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of people affected uh, that were essentially under 10 feet of water. So this is really, really nasty. By the way, they called this, th this actually did a pretty good job of it. They said this is essentially a, it said the amount of water that's been rising and will continue today, even as the storm is passing, is basically a 500-year flood. I kind of like how they put that because that's saying this has happened before. It's probably happened a time before that and a time before that. This is in modern day history, as far as they've been recording, they say the biggest storm that hits. Now, there's this whole thing basically saying that this is, uh, this is getting worse and worse every year. This is it just happened to be a huge storm that hit an extremely po uh, extremely populated area in a very rare spot. The thing is is that they want to they want to they're gonna all media is gonna use this for a certain narrative. and I just want to point out that this isn't the strongest that's ever been out there. This is something that is the strongest that's ever hit and specifically hit that area. It's kind of like when the 9.0 hit Japan, uh, it hit Metropolis. It, it, it's a 9.0 can hit, and if they're if it's up by you know I don't know say if it's a 
2.0 out in the middle of the ocean off of some islands that are in it, uninhabited and it goes over the entire islands. It, it's not going to be as bad as if a 9.0 hits off of Cascadia, it's going to be in an area where it's going to take out metropolises. It's going to be one of the worst disasters we'll ever see. You could have the same event happen two different places and, and it, it's not going to be as bad. This was bad because of where it hit how strong it was this was like the perfect conditions and like they say this was a 500 year uh flood event this was this was something that was uh that was that has happened before so and it will happen again but most likely hopefully not for a long time right and, and that flooding is all across the state it's not i mean some of these massive pictures that we see are right there at the edge where the water came in but you know 30 inches of rain or however much it was it was significant it was all the way across the state there's people over in you know on the on the uh, east coast that have had just as much flooding maybe not as high as the surge but flooding that is you know torrential and significant to all their low-lying lands and to their homes and their streets and everything so it's a big deal across the whole state <laughs> yeah and and it it was it was big it was a big 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 one now uh dex i'll let you cover this one this is a little bit lighthearted before we get into the really really nasty stuff so we're going to be getting into the scary stuff so after this one you probably want to tune out if you have uh really bad anxiety if you get uh, panic attacks or if you make rash decisions upon learning really scary information uh, why don't you cover this very lighthearted, gladly, uh, lighthearted uh, story here? <laughs> gladly. So uh, these weather people are, are are oftentimes humorous, especially I think we've seen the the times where the weather guy is just leaning into the wind, and then a couple people go walking by in their shorts and t-shirts like nothing's happening. Um, but here's a here's a new one. I have never seen this before. Um, I saw it and I said this couldn't be real, and then I had to look, and sure enough, it is real. One of the reporters actually used a prophylactic on their microphone to protect it from the weather and apparently then went on to make their own tweet and video short about it and explaining that this is okay. This is normal. This is what they have to do to protect their their sensitive equipment that can't get wet. So um, there's actually a, a picture down below uh, the video if you want to see it from the reporter who made it. And I think they probably have gone viral by now because of this, because it's so kind of outrageously, but in some ways in, in genius, if you want to call it that, and also kind of ooh or, or gross, if you want to think of it that way too. Um, but yes, that's what a reporter in the weather down there um, decided they were going to use to protect their sensitive microphones. And this was from NBC of all places. I imagine they could charge a fortune for that. It's a microphone cover. And moving on, if you haven't already, make sure to go over and check out marfuglenews.com slash energy. This is what actually runs my whole studio. If you haven't already gone to their website, you would not know this is a modular system that can create power out of sunlight. Uh, yeah, solar generators are really great. And the real reason I think that they're really, really surpassing gas is because obviously gas uh, is super expensive. But on top of that, this is silent. I think one of the biggest things, and I said this last time we had a huge storm here, you could hear three blocks away every house that had a generator going. When the power went out here for about two days, you could hear every single house with those gas generators running. Now, I won't say, though, gas power generators are good to have. In fact, if you really were able and comfortable and and were had the money to get both, it would be really good to have both, to have one that uh, would you know take have in place of the other. The other great part about this is you just need the the hardware, you need the solar panels and then the unit, uh, but you don't need to store anything. You don't need to store gas. Uh, that's another thing that most people can't do, especially if they're in an apartment. 
If you're in an apartment somewhere or, or in a small place, you can't really have barrels of gasoline. In fact, some places it's illegal to uh, actually stock up on gasoline, especially big barrels, which you're going to need uh, essentially something that will last a very long time. Now, the really strong, strong, strong selling point of the energy is the fact that it is modular. It is extremely customizable, so you can actually add mods to triple the input. Uh, and in fact, it, you can actually keep doing and keep modding this thing. It's really in, insane. They are built like Legos. Uh, it is extremely, extremely high quality uh, metal that is, uh, is essentially, they stack like Legos. I mean, it, there's no other way to describe it. Uh, and they can add mod boxes in between. You can also... Uh, everything is in its own footprint, so there's no external wires in each stack. Now, you can exp expand this up to 96 batteries, which is huge. Each battery, most people are going to just get the, the head unit with 1,000 watt-hour battery, but if you wanted 2,000 uh, 2, watt-hours, you can do that. If you want 3,000, if you want 96,000 watt-hours, you can do that. That is what is so awesome about this system. On top of that, it's uh, it's just an incredibly, incredibly well-made uh, machine. There's little to no maintenance on this because it doesn't have a motor or gas-powered anything. Uh, and then it's plug-and-play. It's super easy. Nobody, uh, anybody could literally work this thing. Uh, anybody can just plug in one cord to another, and you're done. You're you're going and you're you're up and running. So to be able to replace power after you've lost power. Uh, pretty much anywhere in the country, you can pretty much say that almost all of you have lost power at one point. You Most all of you have probably stayed at a hotel one time in your life because of power. Uh, this is a huge deal. This gives you the the basically the power to keep going and to not worry about it. Go to marfuglenews.com slash energy. You can get upwards of $170 off depending on the package. And they have packages, of course, with... Uh, you, you can, of course, get uh, packages with solar panels. You can get packages uh, with all sorts of different things. So make sure to go check it out. And they also have the Kodiak X2, the built all-in-one system. That is coming out and shipping in December. That has the new lithium-ion phosphate technology. So make sure to go check that out as well while you're there. Uh, when you go and purchase this, not only are you getting a discount, but you're helping us. We are covering controversial stuff that does not rate they will show you 100 pages of CNN and Fox and whichever, you know, PBS, whatever. Uh, we are down at the very bottom of the barrel. Also, almost everything we cover, we could say, cover the exact same topic as uh, one of those big dogs. And it will be not suitable for advertisers for us. Well, it's, it stays uh, suitable for them. Somehow, I don't know how that works, but it doesn't seem fair. So what is really fair is, is how you guys are able to... Uh, again, share our stuff out, like our stuff, subscribe, and help us keep growing, even though we are basically at that bottom of the barrel. So thank you, everybody, and I appreciate it. That's why we don't grow very fast, but the people that we are gaining are people that stick around and have been here for years. There's a lot of people here that have literally been here since I started the channel, and they have just stuck around through thick and thin through drama, through people talking smack about me. You guys have had my back. So I appreciate it. I know not, I know nobody appreciates ads and things like this, but this does help us run. And most of you understand, most of you have uh, jobs and work as well. We do side gigs. We do all sorts of things. Both myself and Dex have side gigs to keep things going. This helps. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we love you guys. Thank you so much for those of you who have ordered through us. And then this is really cool. So another Fugle family member did a really awesome video and I uh, asked Rhiannon to actually upload it and she did. So we're going to show you, this is a technology we actually talked about previously. We covered this in Texas. There is a store, I believe called Sh uh, Schwartz or Shirts, and they are going basically people right? Or somehow I'll let her explain. So this is a video from Rhiannon S. She actually runs the uh, Marfugel fa fan, uh, the Facebook fan page. So let's see here. Switch shirts. So they have this new technology. Hey, so I'm at the HB and shirts. So they have this new technology. They give you this scanner right here, 
and what you do is you scan each item and you put it in your cart. So let's see here. Okay, so. And it should pop up. There you go. There's your chicken nuggets. So it's pretty fun to, um, you know, kind of scan all your own items. It goes, you know, everything is scanned right on here. I got some wine and some nuggets and stuff. The only problem is you have to bag your own items. So they give you like a bunch of bags and as you're filling your car, you kind of have to like bag your own stuff. Okay, so here's the fast scan area. So I have my groceries and my scan in the cart. And it says I have to remove all personal items. I wanted to pause it for a second here. Look at this. So it's like a tower that scans everything at once. Do you see that? Oh, it, it's actually cut off a little bit. So I'm going to go out of full screen so you can see this. There's a tower above. This is, this, let me ask this. Is this scanning you as well? Is this in the future? Would they be able to sneak something in that would be able to scan if you had stuff on you? Say if you walk through line with a, a something like a sidearm. I don't know. It's just, uh, just I a don't. thought. From the car? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So we place it on the ramp thing. And on our thing, we set checkout. Okay. Then we scan the QR code here. Okay. And then we pay right there. Okay. And then we go to the pay station and you pay right here. So we scan this one too. So then we scan this one. Self-check. So then you get to a pay station. And card. This and does not seem any faster down. though. I, I, that's one thing that I, I, uh, I, of course it's going to change over time, but it doesn't, it, it seems like a lot of steps. Does it not? What do you guys think? I'm going to go over to chat. What do you guys think about the, uh, the fast scan technology? It's to program you for the chips as Daniel Hernandez, uh, three OG, three more things you didn't have to do. Doesn't make sense. It's not faster. See, the thing is, is like, okay, so but the first part, that's the confusing part. I thought I was under the impression that you just all throw it into the, the cart. And then as you're walking out, you, uh, you, you put the cart up on there. Dex, is that, is that actually how it works or? It, it looks to me like you scan each item kind of like you, uh, would do at, um, Sam's club, which has that with the app. But the interesting thing is at the end there, you're putting the cart, it looks like to me, it's being put on a scale. So just like when you do self-checkout now, they weigh the item that goes into the bag. They're literally weighing the cart to see if the cart weighs the correct amount for everything that's in there. I wonder how accurate that is. Oh, because you, but the stuff you don't, but you're still scanning everything. In fact, you, well, I guess well, yeah, if it's you better because you're scanning as you go. And you left four things out, right? then those four things would be in the cart and it would cause the cart to weigh more than it should because they know the weight of everything that's in, that's been scanned. Yeah, but I would think... That's it, how I think they're verifying it. Why wouldn't they just have it... Well, because it would be expensive, but now it's come down the price on a lot of the stuff. If you would have a chip that was that was uh, that just put off a signal, then you would know everything in that cart. But if, it's, if it is based on weight, that's kind of... I mean, that's not even advanced technology. That's like... It's like they're they basically added an app to their store experience and they're taking jobs away. That's the other thing. This is taking jobs. This is going to affect j the job market. If that spreads, if people go and support, and I, I'm not telling you what to do, but if people do go support stores that do this, you are slowly going to get rid of employees. You are slowly going to get rid of, and hey, you might not work at a grocery store now, but whatever your job is right now, are you really sure that that's going to last five years and you might not have to fill out a resume at a grocery store? That's the thing. You might be killing a, a different career that you might have to be in later on. 
I don't know. I, I don't personally like this. I, I get that, you know, some it, it's uh, it would be fun to do as far as like, hey, this is cool. Same with the Amazon Fresh store in uh, down in Bellevue, I think it is. Uh, I have not been inside, but they basically you just walk out with the stuff, right? So is this more advanced from that? Would you do it? If this popped up, if this technology happened at a store by you, would you support the store? Uh, do you think it's fun? Would you do it? Do you, do you not like dealing with people? Uh, after CV, I mean, like, all this stuff came about because of CV. It seems like this was, CV was the push that got people thinking like, oh, I don't like people. I don't want to be touching stuff. I don't want to do this. Or I don't want to deal with people. And then it, it, it kind of morphed into this. Now it's, it's what, I mean, what, what is the purpose of this? Just to reduce employees? Go ahead. You know, it's sort of related, but similar. I, I don't, it's rare that I go to Walmart just because I don't like going there. Uh, but I happened to be in one the other day and it was in the morning time during the middle of the week when it's not, uh, you wouldn't expect it to be crowded. And the thing that struck me was the number of employees that were there packing orders. In other words, people were placing all their orders, even for groceries, online to be picked up. And you would walk, you, you would expect to walk down the aisle and run into other customers. I, I, it seemed like I was walking down every aisle and running into at least two employees who were basically putting you know orders in bags and putting them in these little special bins, and they were basically collecting orders. Um, I, I thought that was kind of a, another way to think about how the technology is changing, where people just literally go on their phone, don't even go to the store, order what they want, and then show up and have it you know placed in their trunk for them. Um, you know, that that in one way is employing people because those people are actually picking the items and putting them in a bag. for. But that's you. not going to last. Um, X. They're going to have a robot yeah. pick it from the shelves. That's that's what's next. And we over, we've already seen these robots in action. There's the robots that are stacking and inventory. And what they'll do is they'll have uh, you'll see that part of the store right now. They've built they've changed stores permanently for something that was supposed to be a temporary thing. They've built these areas in there, the self pick or whatever that, that, and again, they started a lot of this stuff before and, and it was because it's not, it wasn't because of the, the, the stuff that was going around. I think it was because they want to get rid of employees. They want a robot that doesn't need uh, insurance, that doesn't have L and I claims that doesn't sue them for uh, one of their other coworkers flirting with them or something. They don't want that. They want, they want robots that, that increase their bottom line. A one-time purchase, and they put that, and they write it off, and boom, they're they're moving on with that, and they might have a cost down the road to fix the robot. You don't think this is real? Look at the robot technology that's being worked on. Dex and I were just talking about this uh, earlier, and I noticed that not only the AI program that I used to do a couple photos, and I I, I was testing it. It wasn't Dolly. It was a Wonder, and. Uh, we were looking up at how the how copyright works with AI. Apparently right now you can't really copyright AI stuff or you're not supposed to because it's technically not made by another human. But as far as it was uh, a, a UKR startup, it was done where the conflict is done right now. And I was surprised by that. And, and actually tonight there was another piece that I ended up sending Dex. I, I sent you that thing about uh, how there's a UKR where Zelensky is uh, the leader of, there's another startup that is doing AI voices. And what happened is James Earl Jones that actually did the voice for Darth Vader, uh, he's been doing it for 50 years. And he wants out. He says, I'm done. I want to move past this role. He signed off on all of the recordings of his voice. And this AI startup in Ukraine is basically taking all of those voices and all of his clips and now they're able to generate his voice without him being there. And we've talked about this technology before, but now it's going to be a, a, an actual thing where in the future you may sign up as a, uh, at a job where you're telemarketing. You might sign something, a little fine print that says, we, we, we want permission to use your voice in the future. And they'll end up doing that and they'll use your voice and then they'll replace you with an AI. Uh, that, that's where I see it going. But why are all these tech startups in UKR? Uh, De Dex, you said it's like a, it's because China, India, and Ukraine basically have these uh, tech Silicon Valleys, right? It's cheaper 
Yeah, they, they certainly do. A lot of the outsourcing that's gone on for many decades here from a software development standpoint has been in a lot of those countries. And UKR has ten, tended to be uh, one of the more advanced locations. It's not the most economical or cheapest, if you want to use that term, uh, as say some of the other locations, but they tend to have some pretty good uh, engineers, so to speak, uh, at software development. So it doesn't surprise me that to see um, technology advancing from that area as well. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, notwithstanding the events that have been going on there recently, which does make things a little bit more challenging, I think, for that country and the people that live there. But yes, it's it's sort of a, a tech hotbed. All right. Well, we're at the yellow part of our show, so we've we, we we're uh, we have so much more to cover in a short amount of time. So let, let's get through some of these headlines. Uh, first of all. Uh, thank you, Rian and S. If you guys aren't, uh, well, first of all, go over and say uh, thank you to Rian and S for testing that out for us. And then Turkey's Erdogan, 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 Erdogan Dex, you you always get mad at me because er, Erdo, Erdogan. I always say it, I always say it wrong. Er, Erdogan. The G is W. Yeah, yeah. So Erdogan, right? Or it's Erdogan. Erdogan. Er, do, gan. <laughs> yeah. Says Pound has blown up as he mocks UK while own economy collapses. Essentially, he's using, uh, he's he's taking a jab at uh, the UK, and it's kind of kind of funny. And why is that, Dex? It's it's funny he's saying this. <laughs> He's, I mean, his uh, inflation is like 80% right now. So it's not like his economy is all that great. Uh, I think he's just more like saying, oh, great, somebody else is here too. Let me point the finger at them and maybe I'll try and make myself look better. Uh, but the big point here is, you know, pay attention to what's going on with the economy right now in the world, okay? You know, a lot of these smaller countries have been having problems. That's sort of to be expected. But now that a lot of the bigger countries are having problems, yet the U.S. dollar, as you know, you and I talked offline, Adam, has been pretty strong or is, is, is staying strong. And by the way, things don't, you know, everything that goes up must come down at some point. It doesn't mean it goes down forever, but it doesn't also mean it goes up forever. That doesn't happen either. But, um, you know, the, the British pound, taking a very big butt whooping right now, so to speak, uh, compared to the U.S. dollar, which is putting it in line with a lot of other currencies that have been doing that, which others like, you know, the uh, Vlad's uh, ruble is not. And um, I think even India's rupee has been fairly flat, not been taking as much of a hit. And um, even Xi's uh, yuan has not... Uh, it's taken some of a hit, but it's not taken as big of a hit as some of the other countries. So we'll, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute too. And by the way, be real beast. Thank you for the super chat says, can we all stop using the self checkout? They are seeing how voluntary you are just the beginning. God bless. I agree. And then they've even uh, filtered us down. Anybody who uses cash, uh, you have to use one machine in most cases. They're, they're like, oh, that's those are all credit. If you're credit, you can go right through. If you're cash, you have to wait. Of course, what are people going to do? They're going to switch. And then China tells state banks to prepare for a massive dollar dump and yuan buying spree as Beijing's prior in interventions have failed to stem its currency's uh, worst year since 1994. It says the People's Bank of China has told major state-run banks to prepare to shed dollar holdings while snapping up offshore yuan, it says, which has continued to fall despite prior interventions, sources told routers. It says the scale of this latest effort to prop up the yuan will be big and could provide a floor to the Chinese currency, according to the report. It says the amount of dollars to be sold hasn't been decided yet, but routers said that it will be primarily... Uh, involved the state bank's currency reserves. Their offshore branches, including those based in Hong Kong, New York, and London, were ordered to review offshore yuan holdings and check to see that dollar reserves are ready. Dex, this is, uh, is this kind of, this almost seems like they're they're preparing for something to happen. Does somebody well, know... I Yes, something? and it's a sign of the times of the of their economic position. So when you know, think of this as a stock or in a company, right? If you if you own a company and you're public and your stock is like really really low, but you have a lot of belief and faith in it, 
one of the things you can do is take and you have a lot of cash you can take your cash and go buy your own stock back which takes it out of the market and by doing that the demand uh goes up uh but the the supply goes down so therefore the price goes up so what they're doing is they're saying hey we have all these u.s dollars that we've got we've been holding for a long time because they invested heavily in the u.s dollar because their dollar value is going down what we're going to do is go buy as much of our own currency back and swap it for U.S. dollars so that we can pull it back out of the market, which then in, a, in turn is a hopefully, in their opinion, is trying to save their economy. Um, so these are the games that they play with financial currencies. They play it with stocks. They play it with all sorts of different things. So, you know, these are this is sort of the red flags that are going off all around the world right now, economically speaking. Um, and and don't kid ourselves because when they keep saying the U.S. dollar is strong, the U.S. dollar is strong. You know, yes, right now we're at the strongest uh, compared to everyone else, right? But that, you know, I think only the other one would be Vlad's currency, but his currency is not being traded because of the sanctions. So it's kind of hard to compare that, even though the numbers look high, it doesn't necessarily mean it is. Um, but because of that, it, it's kind of a scary point because we've talked a lot about how if all of the other currencies fail or all of the other markets fail, especially Europe, which is huge, um, that's like a domino effect and it will hit us at some point and it will and when it hits the US dollar it's game over for the global economy and maybe that's what they're banking on i know a lot of people here talk about what you know changes they think are coming um and you know maybe these are those signs so by the way there's a, a ton of talk about the currencies because a lot of people are uh showing all of the graphs and the currencies basically collapsing or you're just dropping like rocks and meanwhile the u.s is like one of the few ones that's going up uh, along with the ruble as well but the ruble's not traded like he said now this is i if you haven't watched the video i did over on marfugal uh news i stayed up to watch this live and uh so you didn't have to man it was so chaotic it was so creepy i at one point as i told rihanna in, uh, earlier I felt like I felt like something was going to happen to her, to the VP. It was so creepy. There was it was really hectic and I don't know if it was planned to look hectic like it was like it was supposed to be scary, but all of the the all of the the camera people were arguing. People were actually getting attitude with each other like, "Oh, whatever, buddy. Like you just step over there, blah blah blah." People were uh, one guy was saying, "You need to stand here. This guy is who you need to be like, you know." This guy over here is is uh, what you all need to be like. You're you're not being model cameraman or whatever. One guy's yelling at them. Another woman is is yelling at people to get down. All the it's just super unprofessional, uh, and it was really like panicky for a second. And then you see Kamala go up to the line, the same line that we have this famous photo of T Man uh, shaking Kim Jong Un's uh, hand. And she's standing there, and instead of Kim, Kim, it's basically this uh, U.S. soldier that's standing there with her, and they're just talking casually. And then the camera, for whatever reason, somebody says something, and then the camera drops to her feet. And at that point, I said, whoa, whoa, what's going on? And it was supposedly a live feed, but then it started looping. And it started looping from her, her the same shot, and it looked like, oh, maybe they're just panning up and down. But then you see the same hand go into the frame, and then you see the same hat. And you hear somebody go, guy in the front with the hat, get down. And it keeps looping. And I go, what just happened? This is supposed to be live. And then it just, it, it, it started looping. And I'm going, whoa, did something just happen? Are they, you know, are they uh, delayed? So if something happened, and I say this because right before that, it showed a guy in a huge window at the building on the NK side, the North Korea side, there was the, the Capitol building or whatever, the other side of the DMZ. I don't know what they call that building. There's old school windows that you have to physically lift up. They were about five feet wide. There's a guy in a, like, it, I can only describe it as like a uh, track suit that you would see Dennis Rodman wear, you know, just all bright green, bright whatever, bright white and green. And he's sitting in the window like this with a hoodie on. And there's a guy in the darkness. You can see a figure behind him. And I'm thinking, is this guy bending over? And the other guy has some sort of, uh, you know, weapon on his back, like using it as a, a table or something like it looked super sketch. And then right after that, it started looping. And then everybody starts arguing and everybody starts going, 
We're, we're gonna go. Oh, we're, we're gonna pack up. Nothing happened. Kamala didn't talk to anybody. Nobody came out. Then they kind of show her talking to four uh, Asian soldiers, and you think, oh, maybe that was from their side, and then you go, no, wait, that's actually the South Korean soldiers. She's talking to them briefly, and it, it started, the, the video started shifting. Well, then everybody goes, we, we need to go. We need to go. Well, uh, we're packed up. We're packed up. We're getting out of here. We're getting out of here. And one woman's like, you know, getting another woman, and she's going, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're getting out of here. Grab the VP. And then it cuts to like, it cuts to uh, her speech, uh, they said, which was, they say, if, you know, a few hundred feet away from the DMZ. And she ends up saying this. Uh, and when I heard it, it was something I couldn't rewind because it was, it was live and it was on uh, TikTok. And I could not rewind. It was some South Korean channel that was uh, relaying it. And I could not rewind. And I was like, did she just say that we have a... Uh, a really great alliance with the Republic of NK. Apparently, I wasn't the only one that heard it. It said that VP Kamala Harris mistakenly touted that the U.S. has an alliance with the Republic of NK in remarks Thursday uh, from uh, Korea's demilitarized zone. Or the DMZ sought to reaffirm America's commitment to the security of its Asian outli uh, allies. It seemed like they went there and it, it made it almost out like, like they went there to to be peaceful and to try to talk but they didn't come out maybe they just like popped up randomly because that's what it looked like maybe they just showed up and said you know hey have them come out and they gave them like two minutes and said okay we're out of here oh well they don't want to work with us and then did this speech say and then she she awkwardly is like ha 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 she's like laughing and she goes ha ha because uh, you know, I guess they just launched a ballistic missile because <laughs> apparently they have ballistic missiles in the DPRK. Apparently they have ballistic missiles in the DPRK. This is the vice president. I was like, is this some supposed to be a joke? Is this her weird humor? And then she does a gaffe that her boss would make. I'm sorry, but it's like people people on both sides, they want to defend this kind of stuff. First of all, the, the whole left-right whole thing is just a, a division tactic in my eyes. But as far as the gaffes that they're making, I don't think that when you have a script, it's front of you. I make less gaffes and I read every single day. These people are held up to a different uh, standard than ours. I bet I would definitely make gaffes if I was VP or the president. 100%. But when you make gaffes at this level and say that we have an alliance with NK, like, was that an accident? Was that subconscious? Like, what? she was super nervous. And if you watch the video, she's like stumbling over her words. Maybe she was scared. Maybe they, they were scared because of what just happened. It made me think something shady as hell was going on. And I'm telling you, it was shady. I for the uh, I, That was the first time watching what she was doing. I got butterflies thinking, oh my gosh, is, is this where it's going to happen? Like something happens. And I'm thinking, everybody thinks it's going to happen to JB and then she takes place, right? I'm thinking, wow, what happens if she gets something happens to her and something happens to her? What, then we have uh, Nancy in the office? It, it just seemed, something seemed off about the whole thing. So the, the Kamala thing, she basically said this, and then she went on to talk about this whole, uh, basically that that these guys, they're, they're not playing nice. And by the way, after she left, they ended up doing two more tests, uh, two more ballistic tests right after she left. And then Vlad blows up, and they're saying just as a fact here, Vlad blows up gas pipelines, declaring an all-out energy war it may have already lost. So, by the way, uh, I don't know if they have 100% proof that they did it. We don't know who did it still, right? Or are they saying that because the Danish defense says they did it? Uh, Dex, where are they basing the information of, of that uh, Vlad most definitely did it? Well, and, and so this is coming from Time. Uh, okay, so this is, you know, a big publication. 
they come out with this headline like this, but then they then they later say at the very beginning, it's more like it appears to have been done. So, um, and he may be uh, declaring an all out energy conflict, right? So um, I, I look at this, in my opinion, when I look at this piece of information, it's more of, of, a, of, of a statement that the MSM or the Western media is trying to put out. They're trying to say that, without necessarily saying that he did it, but they really want you just to read it. And most people look at a headline and move on and they go, oh, well, you know, Vlad did that. Um, and, and so I want you to take this along with the rest of the, the pieces we're gonna talk about and think about how this message kind of brings together this picture that they're trying to paint to the West. And when I say they, I mean the West. Uh, the, if you want to call it gander or call it whatever you want, the, what the media likes to say. But think about how they're putting all of these pieces together into a bigger picture. And in my opinion, it feels like they're putting together this picture to justify what's coming next. And so keep that in mind. You know, we've talked about this already. Um, we don't know if he did it, if, if we did it, if somebody else on the, sitting on the sidelines did it just to try to get two people upset with each other. We don't know if a natural disaster actually caused this to happen, right? Um, we're not fully sure, but what is clear is this messaging, not just in this article, but as we go through some of these other ones, think about the bigger picture of how it's coming together and what, what they're trying to, um, you know, uh, I guess, incite or create in the minds I, I, of the readers. Iran could have done this. Any country could have done this. Any country that has access to a, I, th I believe, a, a somewhat, uh, you know, somewhat current submarine. Uh, they have these research submarines that could do something like this, right? <laughs> and I'm not talking about that country in specific. They could have but, dropped something in the water and done this, right? Yeah. Go to the bottom. Well, well, here's what what's happening right now. Everybody's up in arms, and especially Europe, right? If this is damn it, 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 people should be able to ask the question: Why would Vlad do this to himself? And in the very beginning of this, it talks about it says, it says there may be no clearer sign of an enemy in retreat than scuttling his own ships, scuttling their own ships. It's it, you know it's been used for a very long time as far as like oh they're scuttling their own ships, right? He's damaging his own pipeline. Why? Unless they're trying to, unless they're both working together to try to like get this going, to give a reason why this is going on. The fact that it, but if secretly, if Vlad does know, say if Vlad did know who did it and it might be say the West, then that would also be a reason for them to be like, okay, we're just doing this. And they may, may, may call G and say, it's game on. Or it might give a reason for them to start this whole thing, to take Taiwan, to take UKR and go into Poland and all this. Start this whole thing on top of, and that, that will be a reason for why everything collapses. It will be just it would it would definitely justify why the dollar collapses. So, so everybody is saying is how all these other uh, currencies are collapsing, and a lot of people think that they're going to collapse into the dollar, and then the dollar will collapse into something else, whether it be a digital currency or whether it <coughs> uh, collapses into something else or gets transformed into something else to hide all of the problems of the past. It it. It's just questions we're asking here. It's, it's again, it's just my opinion, Dex's opinion, and those of yours. We should be able to, to share our opinions. And then NATO threatens to retaliate against suspected Nord Stream sabotage, uh, ratcheting up tension with Vlad. Before we cover that, I do want to remind you, if you haven't already, if you don't have survival food, if you don't have freeze-dried foods, or again, they have all sorts of great stuff over there, go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep. This is powered by My Patriot Supply. And essentially what they have is all sorts of different survival gear. Uh, their main thing, though, is their food kits. They have 72-hour kits, a three-day kit you can throw in your bag, or they have a one-month kit. Again, that's one month or three month kit. Uh, that's three days a meal for whichever time period you choose. And it will basically get you through that. It's also really good food. It's freeze dried, so it keeps almost all of the flavor. And it's packaged and sealed to last over 25 years. 
when you look at the price of freeze-dried foods just from three years ago before CV started, it has tripled. So if you think about it like this, in another three years, if this is triple the price it is now, that would really be horrendous. But again, you'll still have 22 years on the shelf life uh, if you end up getting it now rather than later down the road. If it ends up uh, taking 10 years to triple in price, uh, still same thing. You would still have 15 years of shelf life and you have uh, great food that is ready. Just add water and cook or add sauce in a lot of cases say, you know, any of the meats, you just add whatever, uh, you know, sauce that you want to marinate it in and boom, that will be enough water to cook it and to revive it. Uh, once you add the water back, most freeze dried food tastes very close to what it did when it was freeze dried. That's the amazing part about it. Dehydrated foods are all also great as well. There are a lot of things that you can do at home. If you can't afford to do this, that's why we show you our, our list of friends and people that are teaching you how to do these things, but it is a lot of work. Most people don't have time to actually get enough prep, uh, at least enough prep that will get you through what the potential scenarios are. If you're talking about six months to a year to 18 months of food, which is what uh, DHS says six months to a year of food, then it's going to take you a long time to freeze dry it yourself and a $4,000 freeze dryer, at least if you want to be able to keep up the pace to get six months to a year of food going. They also have all sorts of other stuff. They have the Alexa Pure Pro. If you think about like, how am I going to store hundreds of gallons of water? Well, if you get an Alexa Pure Pro, uh, whatever water you may find or whatever water you can attain, you can actually just filter it through one of these and get rid of all the nasty stuff. Alexa Pure Pro is one of the best out there. It is uh, a lot of people compare it to the Berkey. Only I think it is a fraction of the cost and it does all of the same stuff. So make sure to go check it out. Marfuglenews.com slash prep. Every purchase, not only are you getting a discount in most cases, but you're also helping our channel. So thank you guys for putting up with our advertisements and thank you for uh, supporting us through these advertisements. All right. And then NATO threatens to retaliate against suspected Nord Stream. So see how this puts together? See how this fits? The, the sabotage happens. There's still no 100% confirmation, or at least they haven't shown the public confirmation. But yet now NATO has a reason to do something big. It says NATO has threatened to retaliate against suspected sabotage of Nord Stream natural gas pipeline that runs between Vlad's country and Europe. NATO issued a statement on Thursday saying that the leaks were of deep concern. No pun intended, right? Sorry, that was bad. My dad joke brain does not stop. And that if the damage was caused by sabotage, it would be met with a united and determined response. Well, uh, what are we going to see next? That they went down there and investigated and they'll pull out a little thing that says, you know, Privet. And they'll be like, ha, 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 we, we caught him. Now we're, we're going to have a united response and we're going to go, I don't know, take their country out or something. I don't know. It just seems uh, seems very odd timing, right? Uh, and then Dex, do you want to talk about the uh, Vlad warships and submarines spotted near Nord Stream gas leak sites? And who's reporting so it? So here we have a yet another story that's sort of painting this picture. So... Uh, they came. The first first story was abs, sort of absolute in the title. Vlad did it. The second story is well, NATO is going to respond. Third story is oh well, here's some potential proof. Uh, there was Vlad ships in that area. Um, so that's you know like how how much more are they going to just sort of continue to cram into this now. Mind you, all of this could be actually factual. I don't know, but at the same time, it just feels like they're. The way this is rolling out is they're just painting this picture of, of exactly why we're about to do something. And whether or not we're doing it for the right reasons, whether or not this is an organic thing or Vlad really did it, or whether someone else did it, or whether they're just, you know, creating the illusion of, you know, uh, like we did in the first um, uh conflict over an me where we rolled out the the proof of the wmd and then later we found out no it really wasn't right but it was the reason everybody got behind and said yes go do that right so 
you know, this is this is sort of that that stage of the of the event, so to speak. And I think it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, at least not for us, because we don't actually have much control over this. This is the people above us that we've either elected or have they've been put in those positions, however you want to think about it. They're doing something. Something is about to happen and there will be effects to us. And that's what we need to know. Whether you live in Europe, whether you live in America, no matter where you live, there will be effects if this thing escalates. And they could be very serious. They could be uh, very serious in certain areas, but they will, ha if this escalates like it appears to be, um, there could be some serious consequences across the globe and across just about everybody. Even you sitting in your living room will have an effect uh, whether it's, you know, shortages here, um, higher inflation there, um, you know, conflict time economy really changes a lot, especially if it gets at a global level. Like, just look at the past uh, two, you know, world conflicts. You know, a lot of things happened. Rationing, jobs changes, manufacturing changes, all sorts of stuff get put into place. A lot of rules get put into place that you're not necessarily going to like. So, by the way, uh, Craig Ellis just made a great comment, says, President B said he would stop the pipeline seven months ago. So I tweeted that earlier. I believe, uh, so, so, so let me uh, go to mine here. Let's go to my Twitter. <clears throat> and there's a video out there. It's from seven months ago. And uh, this this is it. So let's see here. This is on uh, Twitter. That means, let me answer the first question for us. If Germany, if, uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine again, then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. Okay. And then uh, the journalist basically says, well, well what do you but mean? How will you, how will you do that exactly since the project anchored within Germany's control? We will, uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. I'll promise you. We'll be able to do it. Hunter, did you see that grin on top of my said <laughs> You totally got it, right? <laughs> and uh, we got a lot more. So let's get right through this. Uh, they're officially announcing the annexation of occupied UKR territories on September 30th. So this is a real date that we can go by. By the way, Be Real Beast, uh, thank you. Bandy Bear, thank you for your support. And uh, sorry, I, I missed you there. It looks like you, you uh, supported a minute ago. Thank you. And uh, Bandy Bear, thank you for sticking around for so long. So them officially doing this tomorrow, I don't know what actual changes this is going to do. Uh but it seems like some things are rolling along. Craig Alicious, Be Real Beast, and uh, Stephen McMahon, thank you. Uh, Dex, by them doing this, they're essentially saying, they're, they're essentially uh, declaring that these places will be a part of uh, Vlad's country. Exactly. Imagine Mexico invaded uh, New Mexico and Southern California and was fought back a little bit. But they then just said, hey, by the way, tomorrow, all those places that we currently are are no longer part of America. They're now part of Mexico. What do you think the people that live in that area are going to feel right um, now? Granted, the, these areas do have uh, a lot of people that are supportive of Vlad, but they also have people that are supportive of their own independence of being UKR. So. This is a big deal. It's a big statement. This is what happened with Crimea. They went in and they did that. They annexed it in and said, hey, it's now part of Vlad's country. Um, so that's what they're doing. They claimed as much as they could. They fought in as far as they could. They got pushed back. And now he's at the point where he's saying, OK, quickly, I'm going to draw a line down and say, this is now my country. So when you come across that line, you're now entering my country. I can apply all my rules. I can apply, apply my sovereignty and everything else to these territories. So kind of a big step. 
it's a very big step, uh, especially for the country of UKR, who looks at that as their sovereign land. Yeah, and we'll we'll end up uh, <clears throat> we'll end up seeing what happens. I hope if if you aren't subscribed now, make sure to subscribe. We're going to have a show tomorrow, and we will be covering this. So we'll see what happens, and then. Of course, when he pops in, when green when green shirt pops in, calls an urgent meeting of the National Security Council for September 30th, which, by the way, I think I missed it on the last one on this one. It actually says uh, that Vlad is asking for an emergency meeting of the U.N. Uh, so basically everybody is saying, like, we need, we need to meet real quick. Something's going on. Uh, and then. It said that he uh, the agenda and other details will be announced later, he added. Uh, Vlad State Media revealed that Vlad will announce the annexation of occupied UKR territory, including the parts that remain under UKR government control. And a spokesperson from the Kremlin says uh, that the uh, that this announcement will be accompanied by a voluminous speech. So we don't we don't know what's going to be in it. it it's sounds like something is going to be uh something is going to be said tomorrow uh and then it says i think the bears vlad is speaking around 8 a.m dc time or eastern time yeah yeah so and he's saying that it will be some big speech so vol voluminous is that how you say it yeah and obviously it's going to be this annexation but what's going to be interesting to see is what more is in there and, and then obviously uh, Zelensky is, you know, calling for an emergency meeting because this is a big deal. That's what I said. Watch what happens tomorrow. Yep. So we're going to follow this. It's it most likely will be the next kind of escalation of, of sorts, whether it be Gando or whether it be uh, an actual event that happens. So we will see. And of course, we will let you guys know. And UKR intelligence believes the threat from Vladian tactical nuclear weapons to be very high. It said that the military intelligence of UKR assessed the threat of Vlad using tactical weapons against UKR as very high. <clears throat> and by the way, if, if the entire world is saying like, you know, hey, th these guys are the, the heroes fighting back, they're probably not going to set them up to, to look stupid. They're you know, it's probably going to make it like, you know, if, if this does happen, then everybody's going to go, oh, the UK or intelligence is really good. They, they called it. Skibitsky noted that nuclear strikes would likely target locations along the front lines where large number, uh, large numbers of personnel and equipment are stationed, as well as important command centers and critical infrastructures. To stop them, we need not only anti-aircraft systems, but also anti-missile systems. So there's another caveat here is that uh, what do you want to bet? Mark my words in the next five days, if nothing else happens, they're most likely going to be sending a whole lot of money or a whole lot of gear and systems over there. Dex, do you, uh, do you think the same or? Uh, certainly there's, there's no reason not to send more money. We send money all the time. Um, I, I don't know where it's getting stored over there, but apparently you know, it's just like a giant vacuum cleaner. So it goes to the owner of the green shirt store. Turn, turn up the presses. Get some get some more dollar bills flowing. Dollar dollar bill. And we're down to the last uh, couple minutes. Just a heads up. All right. Thank you, Kate Barra from New Zealand. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, really appreciate all of the all of the folks from around the world that are watching right now. Hot Soup Don John, a channel we helped a long time ago reach a thousand. How are you doing, man? It's, it is nice to see you popping in, and thank you for your support. I really do appreciate that. I hope you're still creating and still making videos. Uh, Craig Alicious, thank you again for the uh, comment. Appreciate that. And uh, thank your mods. Your mods are down there. There's lots of great mods down there. Uh, you, of course, have Survival Game, Tesla, Light. Uh, Life is Better on Stilts is here. Crazy Coyote, well, Aunt Jenny. Uh, thank you, everybody that has popped in. And, uh, yeah. I don't see any more uh, YouTube chat, even uh, jams. So did did we get uh, knocked off there or something? No, no, we're still good. We're about to flip. You got a one minute left. Okay, that's weird. I don't. For some reason, the chat uh, from uh, YouTube stopped. 
Uh, well, either way, thank you guys, and I appreciate you. It is now time for the Shoutro after we go over a quick update of uh, all of the web-only stuff. Yep. Head over to marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show and get the rest of the story. Uh, lots going on. More updates about Florida. You can see a lot of the in-depth pictures there. Uh, stuff going on in the political spectrum. Um, some things happening with some VPs around uh, corporates and a lot of other stuff. Plenty of, of additional things you should be checking out. If you haven't seen it all, you're missing the rest of the story. Marfuglenews.com on YouTube. Open that show notes link in the description. Uh, big, huge thank you to Celtic Warrior. Thank you so much. Appreciate your support. Love you guys. Have a good night. Be safe. Be prepared. It's now time for the shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shoutro. Zen1AZ in the 